Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about hybrid turbochargers. So let's dive right into it. Now, what exactly is the problem that we need this hybrid turbocharger? Well, we have to go down to the basics. Basic problem is that all ICE engine, meaning internal combustion engines, have very low efficiency. It does not matter which fuel you use. You can use petrol, low efficiency. You can use diesel, low efficiency. Or CNG, low efficiency. LNG, low efficiency. Ethanol, still low efficiency. So, lot of power is wasted. Now, here's the deal. Waste um, your energy is not just happening in one format. It's happening on multiple formats. For example, if you can hear your engine, engine is wasting significant amount of energy to use it as a speaker, meaning is wasting energy in sound and then where does majority of the heat uh, you know energy is going away it's going in the exhaust gas basically compression stroke everything is fine booming uh, stroke everything is fine dumping that's not fine simply because you are dumping majority of your energy there like how bad uh, think of it this way how much oomph is in your fuel versus how much oomph you can get out of the shaft of the system it can be as low as 30 percent and uh, let's be realistic in real world road conditions 30 percent is a good thing so lot of power is being wasted of course uh, the engine block is heating that's one waste power. it's the noise that is creating that's another form of waste heat energy the majority of it is still going in the exhaust gas stream so <clears throat> That creates a problem that we have a lot of wasted power. That inherently means you have to make bigger engine. Now, how do you limit the power of an engine? Basically, if somebody says, I want 100 horsepower versus somebody needs 200 horsepower, how do you define it? Well, you define it by uh, displacement, basically the capacity of engine of compression uh, and booming basically fuel. That is measured in liters or cc. Uh, so basically, what is the displacement of your engine? You can find generally basic cars are 800 cc, like 0.8 liters. Good ones are like 1.2 liters. If you have really big daddy ones, like 2 liters or 4 liters. Now, that creates a paradox. If you need more power, it's not like motor where you can increase the frequency and still have the same size uh, and weight and get more power out of it. Here, you are physically making it bigger, which inherently means more power equals bigger engine equals lower efficiency. And that's why the planes of World War One and World War Two were so gigantic while able to carry such a little payload like like they were adding just cylinders on on top of more cylinders with some extra cylinder here's deal you can get more power out of this uh, like you know more power than this puppy while consuming less fuel while producing less waste heat now it is and the primary reason this was naturally aspirated and then they figured out they could add uh, basically supercharger it did work it did allow world war ii had to happen but there was a limitation they needed turbo for it and back in world war one add engines just add cylinders on top of cylinders with some more cylinders because that was the limiting factor so that's the problem of internal combustion engine. It applies to everything. Of course, to different level, like diesel does have a bit higher efficiency than petrol. CNG, little bit more or less. The LNG, depending on how you're using it, ethanol does burn very well. That's one of the guys, because ethanol is not hydrocarbon, it's alcohol group, meaning it has oxygen molecule there. So it does burn very well. It has what we classify as high octane fuel. So that's the problem. Like, and all this hassle, like you may be like, what if I put more efficient fuel? That's the, not our problem. Right now, these things, all these fuels that are available, they are far more powerful. Weak link is our air. Because you can take the same fuel, put it in a goddamn rocket, and you're gonna go to the moon. Like, and I'm not even making that up. Like literally LNG is used in a rocket. What do you think Starship is running on LNG? So that's the whole point. And you can take a diesel, bit heavier cousin of diesel, and that is kerosene that is used by Saturn V. So we literally went to moon on that. So fuel is not the problem, it's the goddamn air. Now, why air is the problem? Because is the weak link, it only contains 21% of oxygen. If we had air that was like, let's say, 90% oxygen, then we will not have to uh, make this, you know, presentation. Engines will be far more powerful, but this is the limiting factor, 21% oxygen. If we can put 100% oxygen, well, rocket engines. We can't, that's why we are limited. So turbocharger is a very uh, genius idea. The idea is that exhaust gases have a lot of unused energy, meaning it does have energy. It may be in a format that you can extract work out of it without creating a consequence, without causing drag on it. Because when I talk about superchargers, somebody figured out we need spinning energy to compress air. What if we extract a little bit of spin energy and feed it into intake side? People did that. That's how supercharger work, but it does take energy away, meaning you could be wasting 50 horsepower just to get 100 horsepower or 150 horsepower. So you'll grand total addition will not be that much. And not to mention you are putting load on an engine. You don't want to put load on an engine. So exhaust gas was a different option. Is that instead of spinning directly, what if we spin it through exhaust? Exhaust is already waste energy. Using that waste energy, doing work, useful actual work, it's a win-win for all of this. And what kind of heat and pressure we are talking about? Heat-wise, it's really hot. In F1s, they can easily achieve 1000 uh, degrees Celsius. And uh, pressure-wise, again, I'm getting different ratings, but depending on different engine configuration, you are talking about five atmosphere or maybe even higher than that. So 
the reality is you have a lot of temperature and you have a lot of heat. Uh, so you can use that. What do we use it for? To drive a turbine with waste gases. Basically waste gas comes up, we spin a turbine out of that. Now that turbine is spinning, that spinning turbine is connected to a shaft. This puppy, that shaft. That shaft drives a compressor, that is a centrifugal compressor. And this compressor compresses the intake air. Now intake air that is instead of working at one atmosphere, it can be boosted up to two atmosphere, three atmosphere, four atmosphere, or even higher as four or five atmosphere. That is basically boosting your air intake. Meaning now you can pour more fuel into a fuel tank, no, uh, fuel tank I'm saying, basically cylinder. And now you can boom it properly. Why? You have lot more air, meaning you have lot more active oxygen molecules to allow fuel to dump its energy. Now you are no longer limited by two liter engine can only give this much power. You can literally double the power of two liter engine to almost four uh, virtual four liter engine simply by you are pumping air intake. Meaning boost is 2x, the power output is 2x. You can increase the boost to 3x. Again, you can increase this as long as you can handle it. If you increase it too much, same things that has, happens with rocket engine. Chamber pressure goes too much, boom. Same will happen here. So there is a limit to that. You cannot just go YOLO. And not to mention, exhaust also has only a limited amount of energy. You cannot extract too much out of it. Because if you did that, exhaust gas will uh, slow down so much that there will be back pressure. Engine will stop working. So that is the idea of turbocharger, that we have waste energy. Even if we extract only a small percentage of that waste energy, we can do useful work that will boost the grand total output and allow us to uh, burn fuel far more efficiently because we have far more oxygen rather than being limited by like, hey, we are, have to carry oxygen in fuel itself, like ethanol. Uh, we're like, hey, you can actually combust it properly. So that's the idea of turbocharger, basically using waste energy to do some useful work. Then we come to the issue of this system. Well, it does work, of course, is a thing, and there is a very good chance you may already have used a vehicle or a come uh, close to something that is actually utilizing it. Well, the issue is, is that air heats up when you compress it. Obvious, common thing. And because you are working in a pulse system, you do not have the luxury of like jet engines or uh, coal furnaces. You need cool air in order to do it properly. So you need an intercooler. Basically, air gets compressed, you let it inter uh, go through intercooler, intercooler dumps the heat into ambient air. Now you have cool air that is high pressure. This is what you want to send into the intake. At that point in time, intake happens. Intakes gets compressed, compressed gets boomed, boomed gets dumps the exhaust gases, exhaust gas drives the turbine and the cycle repeats. Everything is awesome. You do need intercooler for efficiency. If you do not have intercooler, uh, it's useless. Now, because there is a physical thing and it's coupled by gases, meaning it's, there is no physical shaft that is connecting, it does have time where it takes spool up and spool down. What does that mean? That simply means if you press the accelerator, you're not going to get instant power. Why? Because while it is true that you can increase the fuel flow, exhaust gases will still take time to drive the turbine to the right RPM. It will take time to reach up to that RPM. It will take time to compress the incoming air charges to that uh, pressure. That pressure to um, boost that cycle to even more, even more exhaust pressure will take time. So that we call turbo lag. So spooling up takes time. And it also goes the other way. Spooling down also takes time. If you do not spool down prop uh, with proper fail safe, you can literally blow the system apart simply because let's say you cut the engine. It's like applied brake. Uh, you know throttle body closed this puppy is still working that mass that physical mass that is spinning is still spinning it's still gonna send compressed air that means this place could end up with over pressure so that's why you need blow off valve on both side meaning if you have too much pressure basically somebody close the throttle body you are applying brake it's gonna literally allow air to be vented to the atmosphere or to create a close complete loop so it does not damage the compressor side and then when you reach at very high rpm and engine is going all out now you have a scenario where you have too much exhaust pressure and again you increase used exhaust pressure to boost exhaust pressure so it creates a feedback loop where you reach a dangerous point where too much exhaust pressure is going to the turbine turbine is over rpming and compressor is creating over boost so you have a waste gate that waste gets open up when that condition is reached it's like bro chill chill you do not want to extract too much energy out of it because that will literally create a runaway scenario so if you do not have check and balances like these two valves basically blow off valves and waste gate you can literally cause a runaway reaction in your engine which was kind of common in back in the old days of diesel engines where literally diesel engine will over rpm themselves to boom we no longer have that issue because we have computer control and a lot of uh, you know valve control basically waste case blow off valve all the jazz so these are the issues that you have to manage with. Spool up time, spool down time. Again, it's a very big issue if you really want your car, like for F1, to be as agile as possible. You cannot be like, I'm gonna press the accelerator and your uh, turbo is like, <sighs> wait a minute, let me spool up. You don't have that time. You're like, I press accelerator, car goes 
for that reason you have to have uh, some way of mitigating that turbo lag and that's why many times people still in supercars or hypercars still prefer uh, you know turbo charge uh, basically supercharger supercharger because it's directly physically coupled with a mechanical shaft it dumps energy very quickly so the ramp up ramp dump down is very awesome and it does have a grand total power would be less compared to a turbo system but it does work amazingly well in terms of responsiveness so why do we call this system energy recovery? Well, at max power level, basically if you're redlining your engine, you're like going all in. For example, in F1, generally they can go as high as 15,000 RPM, depending on the race system and all that. If they are already at 15,000 RPM, that means boost is too much already because you design the boost system to work in such a way that take the exhaust of 10,000 RPM, allow me to go to 15,000. Now here's the deal, that inherently means at 15,000 you have too much. That's why the waste gate was created. So at max, uh, power you have to over boost happening and waste gate had to be opened to bled the excess energy here's deal what if you put motor there what if the exhaust side compressor side you put a motor generator unit here so what will the motor give you well motor will remove all the lag meaning you apply accelerator it's like motor is like because it's physically coupled it's like bro i got you back it speeds up instantaneously so you apply the accelerator car goes into full speed hyperdrive no problem now generator what's the happens now you spooled it up the rpm starts to go up your engine rpm will go to 10,000 to 15,000 like in case of f1 his deal is still going to go want to go up but at that point in time instead of opening waste kit you are like let's put load on this motor act is make sure this puppy acts like a generator extract energy out of it at that point in time it tones down the pressure meaning you no longer have over boost meaning you can stay at that high pressure boost scenario with Without opening the waste gate and recovering energy that's why in f1 terminology these are called uh, motor generator unit heat basically they are using the heat energy wasted heat energy to recover the energy out of it and motor removes turbo lag generator allows you to extract more power out of waste gas and it improves overall energy efficiency like to how much well what mercedes have been claiming is a bit high uh, they are achieving 50 percent now that number may not sound that amazing but realize that that most typical cars are around 30 percent lower than that in real world scenario this puppy in f1 meaning you are accelerating like crazy decelerating like crazy going yolo on the tracks and somehow you are still achieving 50 percent efficiency damn so that's the whole point they're using turbo to like extract energy out of it rather than just like oh over boost over boost blow off the valve it's like no no bro i got you i got you i'm gonna put some load on you electrically and they take that electrical energy is this is the motor system and they like leach the energy basically they're leaching the energy rather than wasting it they are leaching it energy and also that energy is goes into the battery bank that battery banks boost the system the moment they need the accelerator so that's why we call it energy recovery because that energy is completely wasted using it does not affect your uh, you know basically mileage and given the fact that now you have good thorough amounts of compressed air you can burn your fuel far more efficiently meaning your actual combustion efficiency goes up meaning grand total efficiency crosses 50 percent threshold be mindful most other companies have already crossed this point in f1 and mercedes is like bro we are beyond that and all the mathematics checks out. It's like, dude, they are really good at this point in time. That's why we call it energy recovery. So what we can expect in the future? Well, there is one industry that loves this technology far more than F1. That is marine industry. Why? Marine engines are one of those puppies that run for a long time. Meaning those are marathon puppies. They can literally be running for one engine load for upwards of one month. I'm not even joking. Like there are scenarios where engines can run continuously for that long. And some people are saying that there are engines that are in service right now that have been running for longer than that, like two months continuous. So in those sort of scenarios, you have fixed power output. What does that mean? That simply means you can go back to your engineer and be like, bro, design me a turbo that works at that RPM range. Of course, that whatever that RPM range, whatever that load range is, in that gives me G, G amounts of boost. They're like, bro, that will create over boost. No problem. You let it, you design it in that way that it goes yellow. Now, what happens after that? You open a waste kit? Nah. You put generator unit on there. Basically, this puppy. Motor generator unit. Now, what does that mean? That simply means now you are no longer needing an auxiliary generator. To give you a context of that, some of the big uh, marine engines, the turbo units, they can extract 700 kilowatts of power. Let that sink in. 700 kilo, like almost touching a one megawatt. And again, there are some bigger engines that can achieve that. So they're getting one megawatt of an electrical energy out of the waste. Out of the waste, meaning they know uh, the ship 
has the main propulsion engine does not need to run the auxiliary engine of course it will always have auxiliary engine for backup reasons and given the fact of how do you start a starter so it still has that but it no longer needs to run it and people are loving this puppy why here's the deal you go to a merchant companies like bro do this for environmental reasons they're like i don't care do this because you're gonna save fuel they're like shut up and take my money that's the whole point and it also removes one of the another core components these diesel engines are generally two stroke they do require very high pressures to actually work they need auxiliary starter a compressor in order to start that puppy here this is a motor also this generator is a motor also so it starts the main puppy to spool up it is far more efficient far more elegant solution so overall the voyage it saves fuel literally it saves fuel and they do not need to carry too many auxiliary generators so it's a win-win scenario for all the parties involved. People who are installing this, they are saving money. Environmentalists, they are winning simply because it's not burning excess uh, fuel in order to power the auxiliary loads. You are getting everything win-win. And the sound pollution also goes down because again, you're removing energy, everything will calm down. So everything works. And this is the Mercedes unit. The, back in the day, they figured out, put a motor generator unit in the middle. And then it was like put in the side. Now people figure out the best way is like make them as far apart as possible. The reason is these motor generator units are very high RPM, meaning the frequency in the hertz are high. Consequence, the bearing heats up a lot and you have a thousand degrees Celsius hot air running on the side. So give as much gap as possible. And that's also playing a very crucial role here. How the heck Mercedes can achieve that kind of system. And Turbine on the other end, it's completely getting cool air. Motor generator getting cool air and the hot air is through a long shaft. That's how they are making the hot is not too overheating. Here it's not that big of an issue because again, these are huge things. And B, the RPM is kind of low because they are only designed for the 700 kilowatt output rating was for 9000 RPM. And they, it's being using like Mitsubishi Heavy Industries already building it, already selling it. Like there are companies that are using this actively right now. And it will also be, you know, great use for all of the trucking industry. Trucking industry also has engines that are running in white, you know, fixed kind of band, not as stable as a marine industry, but enough in like, you know, that kind of uh, power range where they are running there in that power range for a very long time. Extract all the auxiliary energy from turbochargers rather than the alternator can save significant amount of fuel and reduce carbon emissions. So it's a win-win scenario for all of us. But again, marine industry, they are already set. They are going all in onto this. Truck, uh, maybe diesel locomotive also. Anything that runs on a fixed power output for long duration, it's gonna be really awesome for that. For uh, basically car uses, it can be done, but it's not gonna be that useful. F1 is like getting every millisecond to count. Uh, normal car driving is not that brash, so it's not that useful. But it's a good development. Development of EV allowed us to make motor and generator units tiny, and now we can get more power out of them. So this was my presentation on hybrid turbocharger. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.